Hey everybody, we are teaching Vermilion. Right now, we're going to talk about the controllers themselves and how we're going to use them in Vermilion. Now, in my case, I'm using a Valve Index with the Index Knuckles controllers. But Vermilion is available to all Steam VR headsets as well as to most Oculus headsets and all of those corresponding controllers. Now, it doesn't matter what types you use, we're still going to use the same controlling actions. So, for example, we all have a trigger pull. So, if you're working with menus, working with choices like saving and things, point and trigger is going to be the same as it is in most other programs. We also have a gripping action. Various tools have handles that we can grab to manipulate. Likewise, we can pick up tools and objects with a gripping action. Picking up and putting down are both gripping actions. Now, all of our controls also have some thumb controls. Two buttons. On the index, the bottom ones are called A and the top ones are called B. It may be different symbols on your controllers, but you should have two buttons to operate as well. Now, we also have some other thumb controls. On an index, I have joysticks, up, down, left, and right. Other controllers may have track pads for up, down, left, and right. But they're going to work the same, and they're going to do different things depending on what you're doing in Vermilion. But all of those controls are going to get used. Now, an artist might be right-handed or left-handed, depending on which is your primary hand to control. The studio and Vermilion will let you set right-handed or left-handed dominance. Now, you can see that I'm primarily right-handed, so it's got the, the brushes on right and the palette on the left. If I tell Vermilion I am left-handed, it will indeed swap them, mirror image, so that your controllers are easy to access the tools as you need them. I'm going to set it back to right-handed mode, since I am right-handed, and get these tools positioned where I can use them most easily. Grip to move them around, triggers to make choices, and now I can grab to access my tools. So the thumb triggers will be different depending on which hand and what you're doing. So I'm going to start with my brush hand. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to grab a brush. This will work with any brush. Now, I can paint on the painting as per normal. As I move to different colors, I could wipe my brush on the little rag to change it between the different colors green and then black over here. Now the thumb button A, the lower button on my primary, is also a way to instantly clean the brush. So I could be working with greens and have green on my brush and then in one click change color. Now I can pick up the yellows and oranges and I have a yellow and orange brush. Tap the button clean brush. You'll use that tap clean brush a lot, especially as you're working with the oil so you don't mix the wrong colors and blend on the page unless you mean it that way. Clean your brush regularly with the lower button trigger, A trigger on an index, on your main controlling hand. So painting, grabbing. Now you'll notice the brush is aligned with my hand a certain way. If you need to change your grip, then while you're holding a brush, if you squeeze, see how it gives me a silhouette of my hand. So I can change how I'm holding the brush. So if I want to get in little details that way, or go for large broad strokes that way, you can even rotate if you want to rotate the way you're holding the brush. So the grip on the brush hand actually does let you change how you grip the brush itself. When you're overlapping its holder, grip will put it back down. So we can manipulate it. This is all the primary brush hand. A to clean the brush, grip to change your position. With the palette hand, it's also got the A and B triggers. If I'm mixing colors right on the palette, 
You can see how I can get going and get enthusiastic, and after a while, my palate starts getting kind of messy. Well, our thumb triggers will help you clean up the palate. The top thumb trigger, the B trigger, cleans your palate and resets it back in one tack. So if I've made a really messy palette, mixing lots of different colors, getting lots of blending action, lots of whites, lots of reds, lots of things happening, and I need to get back to my original colors, B, one tap, resets the whole thing. Now, sometimes you don't want to reset the whole thing. Sometimes I've been working for a while and mixing different colors and getting different things happening on the page. And I've got some good colors here, but I'm just getting a little too far. I don't want to reset the whole thing. I just want to go back a couple of steps. The A trigger is sort of like an undo a step or two on your palette. It can't go back very far, but if I accidentally mix the wrong color, the A trigger can take back the last couple colors that you mixed. So the B is a full reset. The A will let you step back just a couple of steps. You'll notice now I can keep hitting it and it's not taking me back any farther. Now I would have to go for a B for a full reset. So the thumb buttons on your palette control the palette itself. Now, undo is a useful tool. Wouldn't it be nice if I could undo on the painting? Well, on your palette hand, here's where we get into joystick controls. Left and right on the palette joystick. Left is undo. Take it back any mistakes you might have made. Now, it can only undo about four steps. So you'll notice my earlier switches, even though I'm undoing, it's not going away. The other direction to the right, so if I do a couple of different things here, undo takes the Mac. To the right, the other way is a redo, puts back in the elements you were just taking away. That gives you a chance to compare and contrast, but it's only going to do a couple of steps. Don't depend on it. Use your undo when you catch yourself having made a mistake or if you go a little too far. It's not an eraser. It's just a quick emergency undo. Left and right on the palette hand. So the left and right up and down on your brush hand will control the brush itself. Some brushes will have several different shapes. Some brushes will have several different sizes. So while I'm holding this brush, if I do joystick left and right, it's going to, let's get a different brush here. So see how this brush has a rounded top. So my left right joystick goes between a flat top and a rounded top. There will be a visual cue in your headset as well, showing you which are the styles of brush you can choose from. That will directly affect how the brush hits your canvas. Now, some brushes can also do size. So I'm gonna grab my fan brush here. Here's where up and down, see how it makes, it's hard to tell because it's only a fine adjust adjustment, but up and down makes the brush bigger and smaller. Left and right gives it an open or closed fan, but up and down gives me a light, slightly larger and smaller brush. So our fan brush has two modes, bristle and smooth, as well as size control for both. Joystick on the brush hand, trackpad on the brush hand, controls brush options. Lots going on with your controllers. The more you use them, the more natural this action is going to get. Picking things up and putting things down, cleaning the brush, changing and undoing. Your two main controllers will work the same for any headset, and they are your main ways to manipulate the environment. Try them out, play with them. I suggest starting with a practice picture. You don't mind messing up, preferably, preferably one that's been saved. So you can just get used to undo palette, undo painting, 
brush sizes, that type of stuff, because it's all down to the controllers. The last thing is your point at the ground and pull the trigger with your dominant hand. That's your main positioning in your studio. The left and right while you're positioning will actually let you rotate within the studio. So point at the ground, pull the trigger, and rotate left and right using the trigger. There we go, trigger and joystick control. So that's using the controllers in the Vermilion oil painting app. Most of the painting action is just moving your brush over the painting, touching on the palette, so we're only bringing our actual controls into it for things like undo or changing control settings. I hope this is helpful and gives you an idea of what you're getting into and the level of control we have within Vermilion. Probably that grip to change your brush grip is the one I use the most, combined with one click clean the brush. Let me know if you have comments or questions in the comments below. Go ahead and link in any artwork you've created. We'd like to share this stuff around in the Vermilion community. Hopefully this helps, hopefully this inspires. Go ahead to subscribe to the channel for the newest episodes, and we hope you guys have a lot of fun painting in Vermilion. Take care, everyone.